come to Fujitsu and ServiceNow webinar around streamlining your service management processes. My name is Hannes Hirvikallio. I run the ServiceNow sales EMEA-wide uh, in Fujitsu. I'm uh, together with, uh, with Alexander Jungström, um, who is the main speaker today around our ServiceNow practice and what we do in Fujitsu with ServiceNow. Uh, on my behalf, uh, once again, a very warm welcome uh, to this webinar. We'll have a one hour long webinar with the possibility of asking some questions at the end. So if you have questions, please feel free to uh, type those in in the question bar. So we'll take the questions and answer those at the later stage. We already have a couple of pre-submitted questions, so we'll take those uh, as well in the end. And uh, let's kick off and have a nice webinar. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much, Hannes, for the introduction there. So, good day and good morning, everybody, indeed. Um, I'm very excited to see such a big audience having connected here today. And today, I'd like to walk you through a bit about streamlining the service management practice together with the ServiceNow platform. So, my name is Alexander. I work as a ServiceNow consultant within Fujitsu. I was previously employed directly at ServiceNow, so this is something which lies very close to my heart. But before we get started, i just quickly like to walk through today's session. And what we're about to discuss here today is, first of all, the power of service, because that is indeed the instigator or the enabler for service management across the enterprise. And I will also speak a little bit more about the value behind using the ServiceNow platform and also how you can optimize and maximize your return on investment. Then I'd like to quickly walk through, together with Hannes, a little bit about the Fujitsu ServiceNow practice and how we work together with the platform and our customers. Because our customers are indeed very important for us and Hannes has a great case which he would like to present with our customers' success stories. And just as Hannes mentioned, feel free to ask any questions in the chat. We have um, a few pre-submitted ones, so we will take them in the end with the Q&A session. So let's get started here. Um, one of the key areas which I specialize in is service management. And for me, it is something really exciting. Historically seen, service management has been kind of abstract. But now we see clear definitions of how service management can enhance and help your organization. And of course, it does all this via the power of ServiceNow, which is the platform it is built upon. Most likely, it is not the first time you hear about ServiceNow. It is a lot of attention surrounding the platform. You do see it on LinkedIn, you see it in media, in press releases, and so forth. So what is the reason behind the popularity of ServiceNow? Well, first of all, ServiceNow really is a new cloud standard. What this essentially means is that ServiceNow is always on. And from the very core, ServiceNow was created as a cloud company. And it was created by the experts of the industry with accumulated knowledge from many years back. And they realized that if they are going to confine their customers, an enterprise customer, using the cloud, it always needs to be accessible. Things cannot simply go wrong there. So indeed, ServiceNow can always be reached. But not only does it have the stability surrounding it, it is also very flexible. The platform allows a high degree of freedom to build, to create, and to expand. So really, ServiceNow brings also a new definition to what scaling means. And that is scaling for you as a customer. Connecting more and more end users, external vendors, expanding your operations with ServiceNow, and further increase the activity. And all of this is done with compliance and, of course, security in mind. 
So ServiceNow really is a cloud which is built to manage every service in the enterprise. And it does this via the service management approach. By using this service management methodology or approach, it creates a very modern work life. All of a sudden, the employees are enabled to be more productive, to use tools and technologies which they are familiarized with from the real life, and bringing this to the business. Historically, ServiceNow started off in the ITSM sphere, or the IT service management industry. And they realized that a lot of the processes that we see within the ITSM sphere can be applied in a lot of other departments within the organization as such. So in ITSM, as you might or might not know, you of course have a help desk, you have end users who need, to, who need support, they might communicate with the help desk employees via ticketing system, uh, incident management, change management, etc., etc. So ServiceNow really started out in the very beginning with ITSM. But today, it has expanded way, way further. And what we're seeing here now is an example of additional departments that ServiceNow brings in to the playing ground, such as finance, facilities, legal, and so forth. So when I speak about ServiceNow, this is essentially what we're talking about today and service management. And this has, of course, led to a very, very high popularity within ServiceNow. To the left here, we see the top 10 rankings from the Cloud Wars. And on ninth place, we have ServiceNow ahead of VMware. And to the right side, we see the industry where they originally started at, the ITSM sphere. And currently, as of today, they have over 40% of the global market share. So ServiceNow has created a lot of attention and rings on the water. And it has continued to develop more and more. But if we choose to not only look at historically how ServiceNow started out and why it is so popular today, but instead choose to focus on how ServiceNow looks today, what the platform can provide. We see a few key points. And essentially, unlike other more general purpose platform as a service providers, the ServiceNow platform has always been focused on service management. And while it is certainly possible to build fully bespoke applications on it, the platform comes with a wide range of service management primitives built in. And this includes tasks, workflows, forms, and the like. So today, individual departments are unified via a common service model in ServiceNow. And all of these departments have very easily the ability to add new functionality and to allow all the modules to access the same data. And this is very important. Because ServiceNow uses something called a flat architecture, which is also known as a single system of record. This means that data sharing and collaboration can happen across the departments. Anything which is connected to ServiceNow can communicate with each other and help each other out with sharing data and further optimize the processes. So it really brings a new insight in how the business work together. But not only that, we also see a lot of new and innovative technologies being utilized within the platform. First of all, we do have the multi-platform support, which essentially means that anybody who has a phone or an iPad or even an iWatch and, of course, a computer can utilize ServiceNow and be connected to the process at all stages. And we also see a lot of AI and intelligent automation ServiceNow has become better and better at working reactively and reducing workload. Recently, we saw a new acquisition where employees can get help from the HR department via using a virtual assistant and chat. So ServiceNow really brings a lot of time-consuming tasks and concepts 
to a new level where they are optimized and made more efficient. And this brings us excellent to the next topic, how you can enable service management across the enterprise. However, in order to enable service management, we need to first discuss what service management means here. So the service management approach, that basically states that everything is a service or everything as a service. And if we go ahead there and have a look at that, what it means is that any enterprise or big organization, of course, have different lines of business. There are different departments and all of these departments, they do unique things. They work in their own ways and with their own processes attached but they also have a lot in common which they share. And if you look at yourself, how you work today, most likely you have colleagues which approach you or which send you an email and they ask you for something. Hey, can you get me this report? Can you generate this piece of data? Uh, do you have access to this document? Can you send it over? And so forth. So you have a lot of colleagues basically requesting information from you. And this information request, of course, is attached to some sort of responsibility on you yourself. You might need to log into a system and actually generate the report. You need to attach it to the email, reply back to your colleague. Uh, if you're very busy, maybe your colleague reminds you after one day, after two days and then eventually you do the same action of attaching the file. But all of this is really a set of instructions and tasks shared across the entire enterprise. And it doesn't really matter if you're in legal, HR, or in IT. You are still asked to do some sort of action and then return with the answer. And all of this can really be consolidated and standardized with ServiceNow. So with consolidated and standardized, that means that you no longer rely on an overflowed email box or you no longer just have notes everywhere sticked around the computer which is supposed to remind you of what you're about to do today. Instead, your colleagues, your employees, anybody can use the ServiceNow platform to request information properly and through the streamlined process. So here to the left, we see a few examples of the service management approach where it can be applied, such as facilities, emergency disasters, tax resourcing, invoicing, employee onboarding and offboarding, and so forth. So streamlining the processes then with this in mind, how does that actually happen? What does it mean when we say streamlining the process? Well, there are a few key elements which I find important when we talk about streamlining the process in ServiceNow. And the very first thing which ServiceNow brings to the table is the customer-centric experience. You today, if you go out online and you shop for something, you are used to interact with it in a certain way. Uh, you, if you order something on Amazon, you want to know when the order has been processed, when it has been shipped, and if it has been shipped, where is it, and when can you expect the package, so you can plan accordingly around it. And ServiceNow brings the same kind of concept, but into the business world, where all the departments and all the employees, in this case, can use a customer service portal. And not only can they create requests that they need some sort of information, but often we see proactively that they can find answers, such as in a knowledge base or asking the community of other employees for help before they actually reach out to an individual department. So the customer-centric experience, it, it really brings a new kind of way of working for the employees where all the heavy customer, uh, customer support systems are thrown out and instead replaced of intuitive portals which works on all devices. And another very important key piece in streamlining the processes with ServiceNow is the ability to reuse blocks and business logics. You don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. You can apply the same logic and foundation of, of functions and of scripts and different logics to many, many departments 
so you can rapidly expand your ServiceNow operations. And all of this is using a good foundation for workflows in the very bottom of it. So a workflow is just really a way of illustrating how a certain process should look when a certain employee should get a notification or should get a task about getting information, when this employee, within what time frame he or she should return with it. And there are many, many different activities attached to a workflow. And ServiceNow uses a graphical workflow engine, as it is called, where you can drag and drop and do all of these activities directly in the platform. And you can talk to all the departments. In this very example here, we see that the workflows are communicating with an external system, uh, Twitter in this example, but it could also be with other systems or with employees and so forth. And all of this is indeed done on the one and the same platform, because when you streamline processes, you want it all to be available in the same place and at any given time. So all the data sharing is enabled across the department, and any person used to working with the ServiceNow system, may it be in HR or legal, it looks the same regardless of where they are. So people get used to the system and they get familiarized with it, they recognize it. It is very easy to work with. So these are really the four key elements which I find very important when it comes to streamlining the processes with ServiceNow. But you can, of course, go further than that. Frank Slutman, the previous CEO of ServiceNow, said, a service model that holistically pulls in the engineering and operational pieces. And this is true, because we see that ServiceNow start replacing more and more legacy systems. Companies tend to have quite a lot of these old grown systems which has been used for a very, very long time. And they might be very simple in their nature, such, an, such as a web application or a module in SAP or even a customly coded or written system. But often this can be created and inserted into the ServiceNow platform. So you get the same functionality, but all within the same platform. And of course, you can start automating a lot of tasks with ServiceNow. So instead of asking Jane in HR to generate that report for you and wait for her to do it, you can ask ServiceNow to directly communicate with the database in the HR system and generate the report for you. So you can remove a certain degree of human interaction in ServiceNow and instead let the people be empowered and focused on more productive tasks and let the technology do the reoccurring things which always happen in a process. And it allows you to get a lot of control of IT operations. As you know, your enterprise consists of a vast number of different components in the infrastructure. And keeping track of this via, for instance, a CMDB and talking to the different systems and knowing what the business consists of from a technological point of view and having full track of it. That is an essential piece when you talk about streamlining processes. Because if the technology is not in place, it is very hard to expand and move beyond and start being more efficient. It simply needs to work. So integrating and talking is something which ServiceNow is really good with. It can talk to external systems and customers. It can really attach everybody to this process. And when you talk about streamlining, it really reaches down and touches all the areas of the enterprise. So it is very possible to go way and beyond with ServiceNow. To illustrate this, I find this explanation quite easy. So I want you to imagine your enterprise as a spider web. And in the spider web, you have everything. And you probably see where I'm going with this already now. Indeed, in the middle, we have ServiceNow. And via ServiceNow, you start connecting all the departments in the spider web. They really start sharing the data. They start using the same platform, the same workflows and you really go on about streamlining the different departments, individual tasks and processes. 
And once that is done, we have what I previously mentioned, the legacy systems and application building within ServiceNow, where you not only can replace the old, but also create new for the future. And the automation part, which I mentioned, is a big thing, followed by the operations, maybe business operations or IT operations. And last but not least, everything of this is always done with reporting, trends, and KPIs, or key performance indicators in mind. And at the side of it, you of course have the third party systems and vendors. And whenever ServiceNow is moving, everybody here feels the vibrations. And whenever something enters the spider web, ServiceNow can touch it. It gets aware of it and can act upon it. And that is of course a very, very good value in itself. And it brings us to the next topic of the value case and maximizing the return on investment. This is a very important topic. Whenever we speak about service now, you of course need to be able to prove that it is something worth of value to invest in and it gives back a return on the investment. So how do we maximize this and what is the value apart from what I already spoken about? Well, to quickly recap, this is how you can work with ServiceNow. You imagine the right app for your business. You design workflows to automate processes. You build your app without writing any code actually. And you connect other apps, data and people. You tap into the real-time analytics. And finally, you move your business forward. But explaining this in a value case is not very easy. However, I have three points which I find is good to push for and that we within Fujitsu see is a very popular thing to bring up in a value case. And the first one is indeed the user engagement. So the user experience or the feeling of the people which are working with the ServiceNow platform, this really goes for everybody, for the employees, for the vendors, for the CEO, for the CTO, for any, any person which is connected to the platform and engage with it, they really start liking it and it becomes easier. It is a very intuitive platform and it has been built on for a very, very long time. So from a user engagement and experience perspective, people tend to truly appreciate service now. And that brings them to time to value gains regarding their productivity. So employees and customers, vendors and so forth, they really get more productive by using service now and they, they work faster. I read recently a report where it said that in average 7% increase of the end users in productivity and how fast they resolve tasks. And if you put that out over many thousands of employees over many years, that gain is potentially huge. So the time to value gains is something excellent to bring into the value case. And indeed, low code. Although you can become very, very heavy technically involved with the platform, in general, it is easy to work with and it is easy to build on the platform. This essentially means that you don't need expensive old senior developers for every little application that needs to be developed but instead you can use the junior developers who are more cheaper to leverage the platform and create new applications. So the low code piece is really a, a cost saver on a long-term perspective when it comes to different delegations and roles and what people should focus on. Simple applications should be built not by heavy senior developers, but indeed maybe junior developers who are happy of using the ServiceNow platform. So these three pieces are a very important part of the value case. But there are some other good points for adding value to the case, which I think is worth mentioning. And one of them is that the unstructured or messed application stacks tend to be consolidated as well. Especially if you're a bigger company where you have many acquisitions maybe and applications just build upon, upon, upon and so forth. And this, this can really be made with a way better structure. 
And when you start working with ServiceNow, people also tend to notice that in certain regards they lack processes actually. So when they sit down together and start discussing of how are we really working, they notice that indeed creating and mapping processes with ServiceNow becomes way, way easier. Aging legacy systems and IT silos, which I mentioned previously, the legacy system can be replaced with ServiceNow and IT silos, which essentially means that the department has grown their own completely isolated IT system, which doesn't really talk or share information with any other department, that can be consolidated in the platform. And it also tends to remove manual tasks, updates, and unstructured interactions. All the white noise out in the organization gets captured. And this adds to a great business agility and scalability. Often the reason why we cannot scale fast enough is internal and especially so in the technology of how we choose to scale. And ServiceNow really brings an additional level to this. For maximizing the return on investment though, that is of course very important. Once you do have the value case, you need to know okay, this brings a good value, but how can I maximize it? We at Fujitsu, we tend to see a set of common questions, such as, I've got service now, but I'm sure I could do more with it. So how do I exploit more of what I've already brought? Future roadmaps, uh, maybe you're not getting the promised return on investment. It could be due to performance problems, but people are not sure why. They might not be able to keep up with the demands from business, they might not know where the issues reside. Or they find themselves in a situation where they need to upgrade but are highly customized and they don't even know where to start and what to tackle first. So indeed, using the ServiceNow platform requires an expertise, of course, and maximizing the return on investment is very much related to that. If we look here at how it in a dream scenario potentially can be, we see to the left side a report from Forrester which was recently released that stated 264% return on investment when using the ServiceNow platform. And the break even time once it starts paying back is an average six months. And to the right side we have some data from another report by IDC where we see 449% return on investment and the break even time there were 7.4 months. In the bottom here of the presentation, I have a few other examples of how ServiceNow really can maximize the return on investment, such as reducing HR fulfillment time, um, reduction in time to process change requests, and accelerate development in projects and so forth. But to get here then, that of course comes with a set of challenges and I've identified together with colleagues six of these challenges which we typically see are reoccurring and the very first thing is process maturity. Sure, ServiceNow is a great platform but internally within the company the maturity around processes might not be very high so it is hard sometimes to know how you can leverage the platform in the best way with that in mind. And it's also hard for people to be able to communicate and translate the concepts which ServiceNow brings to the rest of the business. Because as I previously mentioned, it started off in the ITSM sphere or IT service management business. And explaining those and translating those terms of service management in how they can be applied to other departments we see tend is challenging for our customers. And knowledge is of course another huge thing here. Knowledge about the platform itself, what it can bring, what are the expectations on it and where do we want to go with it, but also knowledge surrounding all of the areas attached to it, such as implementation, supporting it, um, keeping in a life cycle, and so forth. 
Other challenges for improving return on investment is development acceleration. Um, indeed, ServiceNow enables you to rapidly develop, but the developers might have grown used to working with a certain way. And ServiceNow often we see that people start using um, agile methods of developing and working more and more with ServiceNow. And this is, of course, can be a transition for the developers and our customers who are used to the old ways of working. So development acceleration can indeed be something which affects the return on investment. Together with the license plan, um, the licensing part of the service now can be a costly thing, of course. However, knowing how to optimize it and to work with the licenses per the best approach, that is an art form, and mastering that can really add to the return on, the, on investment. And then we, of course, have the implementation and training parts. If you are going to start use service now, it is, of course, important to follow best practice to know what are the common pitfalls, how do we address or tackle certain issues, can we gain some value or information from looking at other similar implementations, and also what are our habits of working with the platform? Do we know about it and how to use it? And once the implementation has been completed, it's of course a matter of training. Training for the administrators who will use the platform, training for the developers who will code on the platform or who will use the platform, of course, for development purposes. And then you have the training for the end users and employees. So training is a very big thing within maximizing the return on investment. So having all of these six parts in mind can be very, very beneficial and to truly think about them. And that brings me very well to the next topic here. That is something which we do within Fujitsu. So the Fujitsu ServiceNow practice. I'd like to quickly talk about it and what ServiceNow means for us and how we leverage the platform and how we use with it, how we interact with the technology and help our customers. So Fujitsu ServiceNow. We are a gold sales partner of ServiceNow. We have been an implementer for seven years now and counting. Over $2 billion of business has been supported using our own onboarding system for ServiceNow in ITSM and field service and HR. So we really drink our own champagne in a sense that we use ServiceNow for our customers. We are a living proof ourselves that using the platform, in this case for onboarding our customers, is very valuable. And this is connected to over 8,000 service desk agents around the globe, supporting 2,700 managed service desk customers. Indeed, globally, with over 30 million end-user contacts a year. So all of our customers can always get support which is accessible around the clock. And we have delivered over 500 ServiceNow products across Europe. We have a deep subject matter expertise within the platform, and it has recently grown even stronger when we double the capacity of our ServiceNow teams in Europe with the acquisition of Symfony ESM. So today, the Fujitsu ServiceNow pool worldwide is bigger and bigger. We are over 400 ServiceNow experts globally, and we aim to grow rapidly over the next years. We have resources in America, in Europe, and Asia, Australia, and so forth. So indeed, we want to focus on the ServiceNow practice, and we want to further expand on it. Here are a few key points um, why Fujitsu and why we think that we really can bring some new ways of working with ServiceNow to the industry out there. We do have the people, process, product, and partners always in mind. All of these are connected and interacting with each other, so it is, of course, very important to always have the bigger picture in mind and working with them correctly. 
We are indeed the gold sales partner, as previously mentioned. Our customer satisfaction is 8.9 out of 10. We have the 400 dedicated consultants with a vast experience of over 500 implementations and the subject matter experts in all the areas of the ServiceNow platform. And luckily, we not only have subject matter experts in the platform of ServiceNow itself, but Fujitsu as a company has a wide experience in niche industries. So we can really help leveraging the platform in specific industries such as healthcare or uh, manufacturing and so forth. I'm going to let my colleague Hannes here continue the track and talk about how we as a service now lifecycle partner acts. So go ahead Hannes, thank you very much. Thank you Alexander. So when it comes down to what do we actually do on ServiceNow, so Alexander gave quite a lot of good examples on what are the possibilities of the platform. But we've created our own offering around ServiceNow, which we call as a life cycle offering. So we can start helping customers around the business issues. Normally these issues are around either business process optimization or then implementing the strategy of a particular uh, business unit when it comes down to an IT service management implementation. And we very often help customers in adopting the tool, so helping them fight the internal resistance, helping them actually be successful in selling the product and selling the tool and the solution internally. So that's what we do in business consulting. We are of course a certified reseller and an implementation partner as was stated. So uh, we can provide license services, support services, we can resell the licenses, we can implement the tools, uh, and, and we can implement the, the ServiceNow platform for the whole enterprise. Uh, when the ServiceNow platform isn't enough, uh, we have uh, particular design and development services. For example, these are very often around custom application development. So if for some reason there isn't a subset of functionality on the ServiceNow platform, we can come in and build on that platform that said functionality. Or then it's related to, for example, mobile applications or HTML5 uh, web pages. So we can create mobile apps for the end users, for the customer key users, so that they can actually uh, re uh, leverage the platform in a more efficient way. We use ServiceNow ourselves. So uh, in Fujitsu uh, we have a product or solution called Symphony We, which is mainly geared towards resource management, time cards, allocations, invoicing. Uh, and then of course as Alexander stated we use ServiceNow in our own service delivery. We have global delivery centers, so those span across, across the globe. Uh, the closest ones in Europe are our GDCs in Kazan, Russia. Uh, GDC in Poland and then GDC in Iberia in Lisbon, Portugal. So, and a GDC is a good uh, good way to to leverage uh, nearshore resources, which are not that expensive as the let's say the most senior consultants from the Nordics, for example. So that's a good way to to create a mix of uh, of different price points when it comes to ServiceNow consulting. We also do the trainings, so we are authorized to do every single course that ServiceNow themselves can do, but we have the added benefit of uh, shipping in trainers to customers. So you no longer need to send your, your consultants or your key users uh, to the trainings, for example, in the UK or in America. We can ship in a trainer and create a training program for your needs. So we can build the training program using the official ServiceNow training courses. And last but not least, uh, we are an authorized support partner. Happy to say that we are one of the best performing uh, support partners in EMEA with a very high customer satisfaction. And yeah, we call our services the lifecycle services, basically from cradle to grave, but uh, everything in between related to service now, Fujitsu is your partner on those issues. Next slide please, thank you. Um, and when it comes down to the bigger picture, so everybody on the market seems to nowadays talk about digital transformation or digitalization. And our message of, of being a service now center of excellence inside Fujitsu 
kind of very much uh, tallies into the, the, the overall big message of digital transformation. Digital transformation for many customers means many different things, whether it's building a mobile app uh, for the ease of use for the end users, whether it's uh, automating processes or whether it's building electronic formats to get the, or gather the data and then process it, so getting rid of paper. So there's a lot of different applications that uh, we, we inject uh, on the existing business side or then we can innovate uh, and bring new ideas from the digital business side. Uh, they're very industry focused, so we have a lot of use cases, references from your different industries and uh, we are continually expanding that via the new references that we build on ServiceNow, via the modern tools on top of ServiceNow or in addition to ServiceNow that we bring to our customers. So digitalization is, is the major trend that we see ongoing and the ServiceNow message that we are producing inside Fujitsu ties pretty well into that. Next slide, please. Then I'd like to have a, f a few presentation slides around a customer case that uh, is one of our, our biggest customers in the Nordics. So I'm talking about a company called Vertsila. Uh, their business is in power generation. So either they produce uh, ship engines. So if you see a, a large transport ship, it's pretty certain that they have a Vertsila engine in it. Or then the other side of their business is to create power plants uh, and help in power generation for third world countries. And then of course services around uh, those areas. So Vertsila is approximately 19,000 people working all across the globe in over 200 locations in more than 70 countries. When it comes down to what we implemented uh, for Vertsila, the, the, the core was the information management team. So information management serves the whole of Vartzilla Corporation and it cooperates with the business uh, to produce IT services for all business customers. And when it comes down to the actual implementation or what we actually delivered, very often the manifestation is a service portal. Uh, this is a screenshot of their actual service portal that went into production. The content every time varies uh, for different customers. Some people really love the chat functionality, they want that. Some people don't, I understand that one. But in Vartzilla's case, this was the end result. Um, they wanted to have a chat functionality. They wanted to have the customers give quick feedback on services, compliments or complaints or praise or whatever. They wanted to have a quick view on, on the customer's tickets. So what kind of issues do they have open? Uh, they wanted to have the customers access the knowledge base because not implementing a decent knowledge base with a good knowledge management process cuts really much down on the ticket, vol ticket volumes that the service desk actually sees. They wanted to have published their service catalog, actually the whole of the service catalog, no matter what your region would be, just to pinpoint that how many services the IT department or IM department in Vartzilla's case are producing. So that was a very, very good point in that case. They wanted to have a service catalog inside the portal so people would be able to order stuff, order new iPhones, laptops, access to services, uh, pretty much variable things. So uh, we needed to build, using the ServiceNow platform, a kind of like a web shop to their end users. They wanted to have a quick access to the uh, kind of reporting an issue or reporting a ticket. So if everything's wrong, anything's wrong uh, in the environment, uh, the end user would have just have one single button to click and it would be easy for them to just pinpoint the issue. Then they wanted some uh, social media elements as well. Uh, they wanted a uh, discussion board, uh, which in ServiceNow lingo is called live feed. It's very much a Facebook-like uh, discussion board where you can exchange ideas, put in complaints, but we can also automate through the live feed. So we can have different CIs from a CMDB actually pre-writing stuff to the discussion boards saying, for example, hey, I'm application XYZ, I'm being feeling a bit slow today, please forgive me, we are fixing the issue. So it's a new way of serving their customers with, uh, with different levels of information. And then they wanted the basic info board, so what's happening, what are the quick links uh, to, to different topics, 
what are the most talked about feeds uh, and, and stuff like that. So that was the end result. Uh, it varies from customer to customer, but the good thing is that the service now has a very good content management system built on top of their, their solution, which is very, very flexible, so we can reshape it, recreate it, and create portals as the customers really want. Next slide, please. A few um, numbers so you'll understand the volume of, of where Vertsila is coming from. So if you look at the, the solution use on the top, top left-hand corner, they have around 500 people uh, using the solution from the back-end side. The end-user amount uh, last summer uh, was around 13,500 people. So these are their customers, the business users, end-users, either way you want to call them. Then we also have some light users on the platform which are not using the whole platform features, so they're using a subset of that platform or then they're using a dedicated application built on top of it. So there were 125 of those users. And then when it comes down to the volume, so tasks per month, uh, 47,000 approximately, unique visitors in their service portal on a weekly basis, roughly 3,000 people, or 3,000 visitors, sorry. And feedbacks average in average per quarter uh, is 166 feedbacks. So their users are pretty active, pretty vocal when it comes to giving them feedback. On a monthly level, the incidents that are logged in uh, roughly 2,500. So uh, that gives a, a rough idea of how much the incident management process is, is actually getting as an input. Knowledge base articles in the knowledge base, roughly 1,500. Catalog items, a bit over 400. Uh, and then CSI items created in average uh, on the past four, 12 months is uh, 47. So, as Alexander stated before, so ServiceNow is a big platform and the value is, is in the core of it. And uh, this is actual live study data from Vertila environment. So they conducted a before the fact and an after the fact business case study where we measured uh, some key performance indicators. And I'd like to start from the, the bottom, uh, sorry, top right corner. Net promoter score, a net promoter score is a basically a standard nowadays when it comes to measuring customer experience or customer happiness. And prior to implementing ServiceNow and implementing new processes for Vertsila, the NPS was at a level of minus 22. And during the project and after the project, after we implemented the solution together with Vertsila, trained the people, organized road shows, sold it internally, so we were able to raise the NPS level to plus 37. Just to put in comparison, for example, uh, Apple, uh, Apple Care, which is uh, their premium support service, has an NPS of roughly over 90. Google Services has an NPS of roughly over 90. So you could imagine for an internal IT function, the plus 37 is actually a pretty good number. Uh, when we move a bit to the left, reduction in number of incidents, 60%. So that's a huge reduction in number of incidents. So right away you can calculate what decent process work, decent tools, these decent catalogs were able to produce in a company like Vatsila. So almost 60% uh, away from the incident number. And you yourselves can do that math pretty easily. How much time, how much money, how much effort would be saved if we were able to do that. Incident lead time reduced by 44%. So customers, not, not only were they putting in less incidents, but the Vatsila is serving them faster. They're serving them better, they're serving them faster, and they're seeing less incidents or less tasks for their IT. Service request, service request lead time, 91% uh, down. So same thing as in incident time, we are producing or providing services much faster because we have a tool, we have the process framework that supports it, and we are able to function more uh, better than what we were able to do previously. Services are 100% nowadays covered by uh, SLAs. So if a IT service is sold to a business, there is always an SLA attached to it. That's very important for Vatsila's uh, benefit. 95% of service requests nowadays come from a service portal. Uh, they used to come from, uh, for example, walk-in, 
or by phone or by email. But when we were able to build a, a very lucrative looking, I would dare to say even sexy, service catalog, we were able to, to guide the demand to a mandatory format. So when you publish the service catalog and you capture the demand via that service catalog, the demand is, is, is always in a mandatory format. And that helps once again to reduce time, to offer better services, and to offer uniform services. Uh, tier 2 and Tier 3 reduction in incident lead time down 61%. Uh, that goes to show the internal efficiencies of the platform or the tool and also the internal efficiencies uh, by implementing decent processes on top of the platform. 32% of incidents are nowadays reported in the service portal, so they still have email, they still have phone, but uh, the number is rising that customers actually ha have adopted the portal so that they are logging in incidents, they are ordering their services from that said portal. So that once again brings a mandatory format to the demand, which in turn reduces time, reduces cost, and brings up service levels. Contacts are down by 16%. Uh, that's due to the fact that the portal is very information rich. Uh, the knowledge base is very up to date. They have a good knowledge management process. So people are not contacting the service desk anymore in matters that they can actually find in the portal. And this is actually a trend when the workforce is getting younger and younger. People actually want to go inside a catalog and search the information and search the knowledge by themselves. So they are very much more kind of hands-on uh, when it comes to the younger generation than what we older people sometimes are. And then gross resolution rate uh, from the whole service global service desk is an improvement of 50%. So baselining that, uh, the figure used to be approximately 25, so that's a huge improvement in the resolution rate. So just to summarize, we are providing faster services, better services, there are less contacts, we are resolving issues faster, we are resolving issues more accurately, and that's all due thanks to a good process framework, a good tool, and actually a good customer for that matter. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very, very much for that, Hannes. I see we start running out of time here a little bit. So that brings us to the last and final part, which is the questions and answers session. We indeed had some pre-submitted questions, uh, which we will choose to focus on now due to the lack of time here. And this question came into us pre-submitted. I noticed that we have a lot of Spanish speakers today in the audience, so I presume it is indeed related to that. And I thought you here, Hannes, could also answer this question, which is what are Fujitsu capacities at delivery and engagement in Iberia? So All right, that, that, yeah. That's a good question. Thank you for that. So Iberia is close to my heart. I seem to spend there every summer vacation, but that's not enough when it comes to uh, implementing service now. So Iberia and, and Spain and Portugal, uh, they have a history in, in BMC uh, projects, BMC implementations. So uh, the team and the capacity is already existing, which we are currently training uh, and, and uh, developing on top of the ServiceNow platform. So the team's already in place uh, in Madrid. Uh, we have a global delivery center in Lisbon where we actually serve our, some of our ServiceNow customers, namely a, a Swedish ServiceNow customer called Husqvarna uh, in, in the Nordics. So the capabilities are there and it's just a matter of now uh, building up the speed in Iberia to get more references, more customer implementations. Currently we are seeing that we serve two customers uh, in the Madrid area on service now, but the team is actually able to support and able to uh, engage with a lot of more customers. So actually, I see Iberia as, as one of the growth uh, parts in, in Fujitsu in EMEA, due to the fact that there is a pre-established team, they have the ITSM experience, and uh, transforming that knowledge that they have gathered on the BMC platform on top of service now is, is an easier task than just building that up from the scratch. I think that's uh, that's kind of the best answer that I can give uh, give to this excellent question. Very, very good answer. Thank you sincerely for that, Hannes. Um, 
I would like, on behalf of myself, Hannes, and the rest of Fujitsu, to thank you all sincerely for being able to join here today and giving us some of your time. We've reached the end of the webinar. I hope that you found this to be a learning experience and an exciting webinar. I do also hope that you choose to connect with Fujitsu and with our ServiceNow practice. For the webinar itself, it will be published on our social media channels and you will get an email where you can re-watch it in case you would like that. But for now, we do wish you a great day and we hope to see you out there in the ServiceNow industry. So thank you everybody and goodbye.